my memories from childhood are not of a polluted bay. It's a vibrant city, it's a beautiful country, and we want our bay to also look like that. As you can appreciate here, we have many different objects of trash. It's something that we see every day, and it's certainly not how we consider ourselves as a city. It just makes me feel that I want to do something about it, and that's what we're trying to do, fix this. Panama City is the next city we're going to tackle in our journey to rid the world's oceans of plastic. And there are seven rivers that flow through this city, emitting into the Gulf of Panama and the precious shorelines of Panama. Together with our local partner, Maria Verde, we'll deploy interceptors in all of the seven rivers and really return the Gulf of Panama to its original clean and pristine state. And with this thing here, we're mapping the coastline so that we kind of establish a baseline. And specifically, I'm focusing on scouting and doing the technical assessments for the new deployment location. So it's, uh, it's not just by picking a river like we're here, we're going to deploy here, but you actually need to take into account a lot of parameters. We need to have some space around the river where we can offload, where we can extract our waste, where the river is wide enough, but also deep enough. The biggest difficulty in these systems is not operating them, it's getting them installed. It's going through that whole process of finding a location that works, going through the red tape, getting the permits, that's the work. Here at Rio Abajo, we are trying to get in as fast as possible. The only thing holding us back is just permitting, but that process is underway and we should be getting in here in the next few months. We'll be doing it in phases, so doing minimum changes to the area here so that we can get the barrier in the river and start collecting, even if we're collecting by hand. And then we'll grow from there. Obviously getting them more involved in government changing at a higher level is the goal and I feel that we're making a difference, no doubt. Today we are announcing the partnership with Maria Verde that we co-develop and co-execute the Seven Basins project. We are based in the Netherlands and of course we have now this expertise having done so many projects across the globe but really having someone that knows the local ecosystem, is well connected here, uh, it's super super important and I think together we can uh, yeah, achieve great things. Panama tiene que ser competitivo globalmente. Tenemos que hacer las cosas con la mejor tecnología. En el mundo moderno, las cosas que no son de categoría mundial, sencillamente no van a progresar. El entorno afecta al individuo, pero no hay un cambio cultural sin que primero haya un cambio infraestructural. I think it's really important to emphasize that like, you know, most of the pollution flowing out of the rivers here doesn't go to the middle of the ocean. It stays here, right? It ends up on the coastline of Panama City. It's affecting the people here in terms of health, in terms of economy, you know, tourism, fisheries, etc. So you know, this is a project for the people of Panama City. It will be run by the people of Panama City. We will provide our support with technology, with the science, but ultimately it's really up to you guys to run it and make it a success long term. Thank you, sir. This is going to be a monumental tour. Así que gracias a cada uno de ustedes por poner su granito de arena, por trabajar en equipo por un solo Panamá. Cuenten con todo el respaldo del gobierno nacional para limpiar estos siete ríos. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's uh, really good. It's great to hear the words of support from uh, the minister, the mayors. I'm excited to see how much trash we're going to see. So, trying to put a camera out here so we can see what's happening when we can't be out here. Well, having it before the system is good for a few reasons, to see how the water reacts and how the location reacts to a big storm. But it also, Ocean Cleanup can use the images and their uh, software to quantify the volume of garbage that's coming down the river. This software can map out and detect uh, material coming down the river and give a much more accurate volume of garbage that we're dealing with. And then it's also nice to have it on the, the barrier itself to be able to, to document the volume of the garbage as it collects and builds. And it basically kind of maps it out and gives you a quantity. So very helpful. When you look at our first 20 rivers, actually most of them, they were not your average river, not average in terms of pollution. Take the Motagua, it's probably the most polluted river on earth. Take the Klang, most polluted river in Malaysia, Chisadana, probably most polluted river in Indonesia. 
Osama, most polluted river in Dominican Republic. So us having now done a lot of more research on all these rivers that we need to tackle. What does the average river look like we're going to be operating in in the coming years? It looks something like this. You know, it's a small urban drain that is pretty calm in normal conditions but can flow very fast when it rains. So the Siete Cuencas project is broken down, let's say, in phases. The phase one is comprised of three rivers. The first one is this river, Juan Diaz, where we have Wanda and Bob. It predates the Siete Cuencas project and therefore is part of the seven rivers that discharge into the Panama Bay, but it's not an installation that was performed by the ocean cleanup. The second river is the Rio Abajo River. And the third one, hopefully in the next few months, it will be the Matias Hernandez River. All of the rivers are only going to have our barrier systems because the Panama has such a huge tidal change. When it's low tide and there's no flow, you're in a matter of centimeters deep. So having a, a, a big piece of equipment like this that floats in those smaller rivers is not ideal because it'll rest on the bottom. Innovation and technology is very important, but also there needs to be a balance. Sometimes what we need is the simplest capture system that gets the job done effectively, and that's what we're looking for. Rio Bajo is our first deployment, so uh, we have around, how many elements are there? 24. 24 elements and almost 100% coverage and uh, installation is taking two days, but uh, so far pretty good. It's a very important river because it has very high level of pollution, but it flows into uh, the river mouth of a protected area, a mangrove area and also next to Panama Viejo, which is a UNESCO heritage site. We're still in, uh, in the pilot phase. Towards the uh, second half of the year, we'll get shiny blue barriers. Um, this river is more calm when it's not raining, but once the rain starts, it's going to look very different than this cute little uh, nice stream we have here now. Todos los días es algo nuevo. Te salen sorpresas en el río. Entre la basura del río, te sale sorpresa. Yeah, this is a typical size catch for right now um, with medium to small storms that we've been having in the last few months. And uh, right now we're catching what we can in, in this phase one. And then hopefully in a month, basically, we'll have the ocean cleanup barriers with some screens attached running uh, about as effective as we, we can. El futuro es relativo. Pero quisiera que más adelante, porque no sé qué pueda pasar de aquí a allá, mis hijos tengan un río donde bañarse y que tenga bien esta paso para, para los hijos que le viene a él, que por lo menos me hagan abuelo y pueda yo ver a mis nietos. Estamos ahí, estamos bien, no nos podemos quejar. Con quejas no nos ganamos nada ni resolvemos nada. Echa para adelante. The last six months have been uh, fascinating, very, very fast paced. We managed to get the permits. We have a, a pilot barrier. We're improving every day, but so far we have already captured around 20,000 kilograms of waste. Many objects that would have been in the beach and in the ocean uh, if it was not because of the barrier. We have also gotten a lot of awareness and we successfully engage with the community that is just a couple of meters down uh, the river from this barrier, the Puente del Rey, Villa del Rey communities who are now recycling. We have a hundred houses participating in a community recycling project. Nuestra, de la que nos recicla de verdad, esta. Pertenecemos al programa de Juntos por el Ambiente, prácticamente lo que nosotros hacemos, recolección en la comunidad, recolección de reciclaje, para que vean de que sí se puede, en una comunidad sí se puede lograr cosas. Bueno, ahorita no está tan sucio por gracias a la barrera que tenemos, entonces nos, nos estamos evitando de que pase tanta basura, pero espero que en un futuro se vuelva a tener un río súper limpio. Domingo fuimos a, la, a limpiar las playas y entonces sacaron más de 2.000 bolsas de basura. Primera vez que yo hago eso y me sentí tan como que si fuera una niña recogiendo juguetes. So we usually don't do uh, beach cleanups because we know that it's a very hard work and then the impact is short-lived because when it rains all the trash comes down in the river but this one was different because now we have the barrier. It looks very good 
Today especially because we did have a beach cleanup um, scheduled on a few days ago. It's drastically better than it was before we arrived. There's still a lot of legacy plastic, so we, we, we need to keep cleaning, but it's just a different scenario and it's going to help us give more visibility to our impact. It's not going to be done until we don't have to be here. I mean, that's the goal, is that we don't even have to be in this river. It's just a matter of maintaining this river while moving on to others.